All right, we are here at the, I keep wanting to call it the 2024 AWSI show, but it's really 2023, but we are looking at the 2024 <laughs> gear. And uh, we are here in the core booth with Steven Eckersdijk, who is, uh, he's been a pro kiteboarder for years, and you've recently gotten into winging. Well, you got into foiling for many years, and then you've yeah. gotten into winging. Um, exactly. Recently, and you're ripping pretty good. I've watched some of your videos doing both. Um, Thank so you. So we're going to get you to walk us through uh, what's new, because you guys actually have some new product. You launched the wing line last year. You've yeah. got some new releases at this show, so maybe take yeah. a quick look. Yeah, exactly. So like John was already saying, um, we started our foil trip or our foil journey about four years ago with the release of the SLC, which is our kite foil. And that's also where I got super addicted to the foiling. Lighter winds, it opens up a whole new world of possibilities. And that's probably why you're doing it as well. You you probably came from water sports already and you just want that little bit more, that new progression, that new feeling. And that's what we were after as well. Two years ago, or last year, sorry. I keep saying two years ago, but it was last year. Um, we started our wing foil journey at Core. It started before that obviously with prototyping, but last year we released our Spectrum series and Roamer series with the XC wing, which is, our, over, our do it all setup. It's um, it's very universal. It will fit to a big range of people. It's an easy to ride wing with an easy to ride board and an easy to ride uh, foil. So all that just makes a very accessible lineup. New for this year is our Vert series, which you can actually see behind us, which is the more advanced setup which is very specific for high speeds um, if you compare these wings you can already see if i take for instance the 850 out here it's a uh, it's a very high aspect wing high aspect wings are can be very fast they're very good at gliding through the water but if you have a high aspect wing you might have also noticed that they're just slightly harder to maneuver around and a little bit less forgiving. If you do a turn, it's already quicker that your wingtip comes out of the water, you get a ventilation and you can fall in the water if you don't know how to shake off the ventilation. So, slightly more technical to ride, but what we really focused on is smaller wings for higher speeds. If you know our Spectrum lineup, for instance, you will know that our smallest wing is a 950 medium aspect wing. Amazing to ride super fun but we wanted something faster for the bigger waves especially willow who has been the drive behind this project as well he's a, a big wave chaser you might have seen video well if you've seen any of our release videos you'll see he's chasing the big bombs in mauritius he wants to go bigger he wants to go faster and therefore we designed this setup higher speeds more glide it starts or it ends with the 700 which is our smallest wing and it goes up to 1050 which is as you can see quite a high span wing next to that we have our carbon mast lineup and that doesn't mean that anything is wrong with aluminium i still think that aluminium is amazing um and on, on the point of stiffness and lightness, they're actually really good because carbon, you actually need to put quite a bit of carbon if you want to go stiff, which makes it a bit heavier again as well. So weight-wise, I would say they're almost on par. But what the really good thing is about these carbon masts is that you can change the shape. So I'm not sure if I hold it up a little bit, you can actually see into the, into the sky is that this is the top of the, the mast and it tapers down so the profile actually changes throughout the mast and what that does is actually i'm not sure if you've ever been there but you're riding at a fairly high speed on a crosswind course you're a little bit under an angle and you get a little wave and all of a sudden your foil starts sucking down um, i know it happens to me on a on a on a fair amount of occasions and at one point you learn to deal with it but that is due to the profile and the 
the wave that changes the, the water flow around. And you actually get a ventilation and a stall and it starts pulling you down. What you can do with a mast like this is it changes that. The stall doesn't go over the entire mast or the ventilation. And it just creates a, more, um, a foil that is more reliable at higher speeds. Next to that, because we tapered off the end, it also means that you, your glide si increases significantly once you are like just out of the water there at the sweet spot. So you've got access, there's a 90, an 82, and a 74. How do you decide which, which length mass to take when you go for a session? So that really depends for me on the, on the wave size. I, I surf foil a fair amount. And then I really like something like a 70 centimeter mast because the waves are smaller. Then if the waves increase for wing foiling, 80, 82 was actually my go-to wing foil setup. But, and I think for most people that will be your go-to. Um, I guess if you're downwinding here, um, you rather want a slightly shorter mast like the 74. And if you're a big wave charger or you're just racing and you want the maximum mast available, that's when you go for the 90. And the 90, for instance, even though this is more of a wing foil setup or it's meant for wing foiling, this little 700 is a blast on the kite. So for me, I'll also be getting a 90 mast to ride with a 700 and go out kiting. Or if you are a big wave charger, that could be your, your big wave setup or you want to go fast, that will be your fast riding setup. As you're racing, you want to have a little bit more mast available so you can go at uh, bigger bank angles, lean into it a lot more, produce more power. So that's when you would go for the 90. But I think if you're uncertain what to get, around 80, you, can, you can't really go wrong with that. Let's maybe take a look at the uh, wings back here. Yes. So the, so the Halo was just released pretty recently. Exactly. So together with the Vert, uh, we released the Halo. As you can see by the color, it is an Alula wing. Alula is a great material for a couple of reasons. Uh, first of all, you have weight savings, which makes the wing quite light. And as you're holding a wing directly in your hand, weight makes quite a big difference. So it's a very nimble wing, it's agile. And the other part about Alula that's great is stiffness. If you have an Alula airframe, the stiffness is just very, very high. As again, you pump it quite often, you actually want a stiff frame. And that is what this wing brings. Next to that, what I really enjoy about the XC, or sorry, about the Halo, is the boom. So, I, I actually used to be a windsurfer, that's how I started. And that doesn't mean that I really like booms, but if you have one continuous boom, uh, you can actually just slide your hands around. And I had a couple of moments where I was about to fall, and if I would have to let go and grab somewhere else, I would have lost it, I would have fallen into the water. But now, because you can just slide it, it actually is very, very convenient and very quick. Next to that, I, yeah, I love doing jibes, tags, fast tags. I don't need a lot of space. I, I just need a swimming pool and I'll have a lot of fun wing foiling uh, because I'm so agile and then having a boom is just amazing. Um, the grip it, feels really nice and thin. Yeah, so it's, uh, we, this is, I think the same diameter as our kite bar, more or less what, what we've been playing around with our kite bars and yeah, I, I really enjoy it. Our XC also has rigid handles because the good part about having a boom or rigid handles is control. It gives you a lot more control than, for instance, just a strap. But the big difference is that with our XC, it stops here and then you have a separate one starting in the back again. So what is the Halo for? Halo is actually our high performance lineup. It's there for the people that yeah, want to charge. It's very good in upwind. With the, um, with the stiffness of the leading edge, we actually were able to decrease the diameter of the leading edge. And therefore, it created a very efficient profile for going upwind 
very fast downwind. And yeah, it's it's a fun wing, very fun wing to play around with. Is this an anchor point for the uh, ladder? Yeah, exactly. We get that question quite a bit. So on a kite or any air product that has multiple struts or valves, you... Wait, let's bring that back. Yeah. So you have your leading edge, which is in this case a lula, and in there is a bladder, and that bladder is your inner tube, and it holds the air. But what happens if your wing is wet, which always happens, and you want to dry it back home, you might hang it on a tree, uh, but then the wind picks up and everything starts flapping around. And what that can do in certain cases is that the inner tube or the, the, um, the bladder, the the bladder yeah. that it starts twisting inside. Yeah. And that's why you have these anchor points to, keep to make sure keep twisting. it doesn't okay. twist and doesn't deform your leading edge while you pump it up for the next session. Cool. I see the inflation points the same as uh, on all the core kites, which is like a really nice system for when you deflate it. Exactly. It's easy to deflate. And so we have our, our core valve that, that just works really well with a little pin. It deflates super quick. As we wanted to save weight, we actually added this uh, standard valve. These valves are great, but they add a tiny bit of weight. These XC, or sorry, this halo was all about saving weight and creating a very lightweight wing that we can use. So you can still deflate the, um, the, strut, the strut, but it's with more of a standard valve. Next to that, we still have the one pump system, so at least you don't have to pump up uh, the strut individually. If you want different pressures though, you're still able to put different pressures in the strut and the leading edge by closing the little clip. Yeah. What, what sort of difference does it make if you go between like the lighter, you've got the range of 8 to 9, mm -hmm. do you usually just pump it up all the way to 9 and go as stiff as you can, or are there ever any times where you go... So, it's, it's always a bit of a question. Um, if you go really, really hard, especially with Alula, on kites I've noticed that it doesn't twist anymore. So it doesn't, and that makes that the kite doesn't steer anymore. So it can be that if you pump it too hard, the wing doesn't move at all anymore. So when you try to pump away and you have no wing movement at all, it needs a slightly different technique versus a wing that still works a little bit. Breathes a little bit. Exactly. So. I wouldn't go harder, especially with Alula, it is a material that's a little bit harder to work with, a little bit harder to stitch. Yes, it's super stiff, and there, but therefore you don't need to pump it up as hard anymore. Okay, cool. Then from there, we'll go on to the XC. This is um, a wing that's... This is a wing that released last year, and... I would say it's still one of my favorite wings and of course when we talk about when we talk about the difference yes I love the Alula wing it feels great it's super super solid but at one point you also have to think about price point and what extra do you get yes you do get a lot of extra but what if you go out in the waves you get washed and your your foil just goes straight for your wing I mean, it's a shame if that happens on a Lula, and that's why I really like the XC from price point perspective, from strength perspective. It's great. You can get washed, you get a foil through it, it's not the end of the world. Again, uh, you can see what we talked about before is you have our rigid handles, which still makes it a very direct wing with the Exotex. Um, the frame is a bit less stiff, so when you pump it, you will notice that it moves a little bit more. But it has a great power on demand when you want to get out of the water. And yeah, it's, a, it's still an amazing wing that's, that's fun to ride out there. Cool. So with the leading edge material, we used our Exotex 2, which has been proven with our kites. It's a, it's a stiffer Dacron with very high tear resistance. And yeah, most of the most of the things or the technologies you see, like the coating on our on our on our canopy, the coating of our Dacron, it all comes from the kite world and has been proven over time.
So then I think it's time to have a look at our board lineup. Yeah, we had a chance to try this board down in Hatteras uh, yeah. last fall, and it's really user friendly. And for its width, it really accelerates really nicely. Yeah. Um, so this is our Roamer, which is our do it all board. It's um, it's a board that anyone goes out on. This in particular is quite a big model. It's 110 liters, but it goes all the way down to 55 liters. Um, with 55, 70, 90, 110 and 130. So there's actually a bigger size than this for the big boys. Or if you want to learn, it's also just very nice to have that stable frame. We went for more of a squared board to create the surface area, to create the stability. And I think this is an amazing board for, for most people. Next to that though, we have new for this year is the Roamer. And it's called the Romer S. Sorry, yeah, that's also called the Romer. So the yeah. Romer is new for this year. The yeah. Romer S yeah. is new for this year. And as you can see, it has a slightly different shape. It uh, has a pointed nose, a pulled in tail, and this board has really been designed to go on the waves. It only comes in a 45 and 38 liters. So actually, it's a sinker. You can't get it in a bigger size. And this is your, yeah, your, your wave machine. If you really want to go carve hard, sometimes what you'll notice on a, on a roamer, for instance, is that the white tail, which is amazing for early wind starts and light wind starts, it kind of gets in the way. So therefore having such a pulled in tail makes that you can carve a little bit harder. Um, all our boards, what I really enjoy is all our boards have metal inserts or actually uh, stainless steel sorry and the big difference is versus the um, the method that usually windsurfers use on their boards which is a plastic insert with a screw that's a self tapper is that you can take these off you can move these around and there's a very very small chance of of screwing up the thread where if you take one of those screws, which is a self-tapper with plastic, you can pull it out easier. And that just makes like, I haven't pulled out an insert of these and it's, it's just very robust. It's also something we talked about earlier. I think that was in the kite video though, is that yes, we want performance. Yes, we want light boards, but our products also have to stay durable. I mean, if you spend that amount of money on something, you want it to last. And that's also always the balance we try to find with, uh, with core. So when you look at the bottom of these, you can actually see our Spectrum lineup. Um, that one also has a Spectrum on it. The Spectrum is a medium aspect foil. It released last year. It's still one of my favorites just because of user friendliness. It's, um, it's a really fun setup to ride. You can, because of the lower aspect ratio, it actually is very forgiving. If your tip gets out, you don't get thrown off straight away. And it's just very forgiving to ride this and very predictable. Especially when you combine it with the stabilizer, it just brings a linear response. So some foils, the, the stabilizer only works from a certain speed. And then all of a sudden you need to shift your weight around where for the Spectrum lineup we really wanted to make it easy to start. So this stabilizer starts working at a very low speed already and levels out your, yeah, your riding with that. Another thing we thought I mentioned earlier is that our Spectrum comes with an aluminium mast. I still think aluminium is great. Um, yes, you can spend a lot of money on carbon and it might look more technical and better. But the good thing about these aluminium masks, especially because the base plate and the fuselage are two separate pieces, is that you can switch this mast around. So if you're not sure about what mast length to get, you just get different masts and you can switch them around with the base plate and it That's just makes right. it very very accessible and cheap to play around so if you're like hey you're new to this sport i want to start small i'm going to get a 60 centimeter mast 
But then at one point you start growing, maybe the shop gets bigger. You don't want to be on that 60 centimeter mast anymore. You want to step up. You buy a 70, you buy an 80, and it's not going to break your bank. So I think this is still an amazing setup for anyone getting into the sport. I still really enjoy it. I also think combining this front wing with the divert stabilizer, for instance, it unlocks some new possibilities. The Vert and Spectrum are compatible with each other, so they use the same fuselage and with that you can upgrade whenever you're ready. If you found your right mass length, for instance, you can also say, hey, I want to go carbon because I want to have that profile change for less drag once I'm all the way out and um, you can really play around and mix it up like that. Yeah. Cool. Yeah, we definitely found this one to be like such a user-friendly foil when we were yeah. testing it down at Like really, yeah. really nice, like it would get up and going really easily, but then would still accelerate and go well and just really friendly yeah. to use too. Like yeah, a good combination. Some, something that the foil designer when we were testing it in Cape Town was asking like, yeah, but how does it start when you don't pump it? Because as a, as a more... As a rider that's more advanced, you start pumping out of the water. You get a technique to just do like two small pumps and you're flying, but that's not how you start off. You start off by just riding really snow, slow, slowly getting up to the speed and foiling out of the water. And that's what we really tried and why we have such a, so, uh, a bit of a feather stabilizer. It's because at those speeds, you want the stabilizer to work, you want it to level out nicely and slowly come up out of the water. And I think that's also why the medium aspect is so great. Also, when you approach stall point, you're slowly going to sink in the water. Where on a high aspect foil, you're just gonna approach stall point and sink straight in. So definitely, yeah, easiness of riding was our priority here. Yeah. Cool, what's the website address? The website address, so if you go to ridecore, ridecore.com, you're going to be able to choose between kite surfing or wing foiling, and that will bring you to the to the right address. All right, cool. Well, thanks for doing the, uh, the run through the gear, Stephen. Appreciate it. Yeah, it's my pleasure. If you have any questions, feel free to ask John from Wing Foiling Mag. Yeah, uh, wing wing surfing mag. Wing surfing. Com. Oh yeah, you Americans yeah. always say wing surfing, huh? Interesting. I like wing surfing better than wing foiling. Um, yeah, there's a bit of a debate. Like I'm still going back and forth because I actually did have another URL. Yeah. But we'll see. Oh, we'll see. Out. For right now, it's wingsurfingmag.com. So either go <laughs> go to wingsurfingmag for your wingsurfingmag.com for your questions yeah. or write core for yeah. our equipment. Yeah. Or even in the comments below on this YouTube video. Sweet. Cool. Awesome. Cheers. See you there. Oh, and don't forget to like and subscribe. <laughs>